Okay. Let's kick off uh, for the new Traffic 21 Institute. And so what I'm thinking of doing is kind of talking about what the plans are for the Institute and why the Institute exists. And I'm hoping that uh, most of you will be active participants in the, in the Institute. And so I think to start off, it would be worthwhile just to have people introduce themselves. Uh, they tell me that this is being recorded. And so if you can push the button and the little green light comes on for your microphone and then you get recorded and you'll be preserved for posterity. <laughs> so Stan, start up up in front. Hi, Stan Caldwell uh, with the Traffic 21 Institute. Yeah. I'm Joel Greenhouse. I'm a faculty member in the statistics department. I'm Bill Eddy. I'm a faculty member in statistics. Hi, I'm Joey, and I'm a full-time student at Hyde. I'm a graduate here at Hyde, and I work at Hyde 21, and I'm a full-time student. Hi, uh, Srinivas Kasman, faculty member at uh, Robotics. Um, Raja Surimurthy. I'm a faculty member at Information Systems in Dietrich College. I'm faculty in computer science department and language technology institute. Uh, I'm Sung Jun Kim. Uh, I'm Christoph Mertz, uh, research staff at the Robotics Institute. And Luis Navarro, also research staff at Robotics and working closely with Professor Marshall Ebert. Hi, I'm Ermi, and I'm a project manager in robotics. Hey. Um, and I work with the TechBridge World Research Group. Full of business. Mario Lightman, professor at Heinz College. Aninde, uh, head of the department in the Human Computer Interaction Institute. Willem van Hoeven from the Tepper School of Business. And just to uh, fill it out, I'm Chris Hendrickson. I'm in civil and environmental engineering with affiliations in engineering and public policy and in Heinz School. So I have a few slides, but uh, and I'll go through them uh, uh, briefly and then hopefully ask, answer questions and we can get some discussion going. Uh, five years ago, uh, Al and Rick and Stan put together what they called uh, the Traffic 21 Initiative. And that had the support of the Hillman Foundation. And it was very successful over a five-year span. Uh, Pittsburgh is now seen as kind of a test bed for uh, new transportation technology, smart transportation technology. Uh, we had the IBM Smart Cities Challenge. Uh, and we have uh, roughly about 30 intersections now that are equipped with uh, dedicated short-range communication and adaptive traffic signals. Uh, essentially, the Traffic 21 uh, initiative was leveraged off a grant from the Hillman Foundation. And when you add up all the money that's come in uh, over the course of the five years, it comes up to about $25 million worth of research support uh, for the university. So that's, that's a real success story uh, that exists. Uh, and the strategy that Traffic 21 had in place uh, was to do d research and development and then uh, deployment through partnerships. And the partnerships were with people like PennDOT and with people like the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, and just kind of just summarizes real world as problems. You guys, CMU, have expertise, and what we can do is put together seed funding and do some deployment to really have a difference in how transportation works, not only in Western Pennsylvania, but really kind of around the country. One of the outgrowths of the, uh, gosh, these 
thing is going to come off. <laughs> One of the outgrowths of the Traffic 21 initiative was uh, funding for the TSET University Transportation Center, and I would guess about half of the group here is participating in the University Transportation Center. This is a national University Transportation Center for safety. Uh, so it's to develop technologies, policies, uh, procedures to try and make transportation safer. Uh, it has six years and uh, nine million dollars of funding, uh, all from the U.S. Department of Transportation. Raj, Al, and Stan Caldwell are the senior leaders for this group, and it'll be going on with the focus on safety. Um, I'm expecting that uh, it will be a partnership between uh, the Traffic 21 Institute and the UTC over the next uh, several years. Uh, we're going to share a common external advisory committee and a, uh, a series of consortium partners. We had a consortium meeting about a month ago. Uh, and two months ago? Two months ago. <laughs> okay. The consortium consists of primarily government and private industry people, uh, with primarily from the western Pennsylvania region. Uh, that was the occasion in which this new institute was first publicly announced. Uh, so it actually was announced to the consortium a couple of months ago. So uh, you can't be an initiative forever. <laughs> Eventually you got to decide about what you're going to grow up to be. And so uh, after a lot of discussion, we decided to try and re frame the initiative, the Traffic 21 initiative, as the Traffic 21 Institute. And we're clearly going to try and build on the successes of uh, the Traffic 21 initiative. Uh, administratively, the Traffic 21 in Institute will be housed in the Heinz College, but we expect to have close relationships with engineering and computer science and architecture and the other units on campus. Um, and what we are endeavoring to do is to provide support for faculty research, faculty and student research. Um, uh, we're hoping to continue to do the tradition of seed funding that Traffic 21 initiative provided. Uh, the Traffic 21 initiative would put out uh, requests for proposals, get in requests, and then uh, provide some money for, for uh, funding. Uh, we have a request into a uh, foundation to support that sort of thing. Um, we have staff support for proposal preparation. We have a number of staff members who can help out. Stan is probably the first contact for anybody looking to get some help in putting together proposals. And then we have this whole uh, arrangement of outreach and technology transfer. Uh, I mentioned the advisory panel. Uh, I mentioned the consortium partners. That's part of our kind of outreach activities. We also have kind of outreach that's going on to a number of professional organizations and then government agencies such as uh, PennDOT. So the Traffic 21 Institute is aiming to try and continue that sort of support uh, going forward. Mission. Uh, assist Carnegie Mellon community to address the challenges and opportunities posed by this emerging new world of transportation and the disruptive technologies driving it. So I started my career, professional career, as a transportation systems guy. Uh, that's what I did my dissertation on uh, many years ago. And, you know, I, I worked in transportation for a number of years, and then I kind of drifted into construction. And after that, I drifted into environmental systems. And a lot of what was going on, I still kept kind of a foot in transportation, was that there wasn't a lot of fundamental change going on in transportation uh, kind of through the middle parts of my career. Uh, we were stuck in a particular vehicle technology. We were expect stuck in a particular transit technology. And a lot of it was just operating those systems. Uh, that has really changed in the last five to ten years, suddenly there are all sorts of new and disruptive technologies that are starting to appear in the world of transportation. And so it's really an exciting place right now. There's uh, a lot of the uh, information technology being applied, alternative fuels, new ways of operating. 
Uh, so all those things are changing, and I think it's time for us, Carnegie Mellon, to try and uh, push those changes and guide those changes as they go forward. Hmm? And lunch is ready. Okay, I'll finish up. Strategic goals uh, stimulate and coordinate uh, Carnegie Mellon smart transportation research, so coordination, stimulation of new research and initiatives. Uh, promote education and workforce development, so we're trying to do education here on campus, but also some education uh, elsewhere, secondary schools and the like. Uh, stimulate technology transfer, try and provide an aid for getting out new inventions out into the world, uh, and uh, continue to develop the Pittsburgh region as a test bed. And we have some ambitious ideas about what might happen, both here in Pittsburgh, but also in terms of corridors uh, over to Philadelphia or up into Michigan. Uh, the people for the Institute, just so you know, I'm director. Uh, the senior management is Stan Caldwell, who's up here, and Courtney, who's not here, she's out. Uh, and then we retain the strategic management guidance from Al Beeler, Raj, and Rick Stafford, who didn't introduce himself because he came in late. Um, <laughs> Ten points off. <laughs> And then we expect to have a number of partners. First, partners. First, I'd like to bring in as many faculty and students across the uh, university as possible into activities associated with Traffic 21. Uh, we already have a partnership in the University Transportation Center with the University of Pennsylvania, uh, the USDOT, the funding agency, and we're uh, trying to forge ties to other U university transportation centers, particularly the ones that have a, a safety component. And we're building on kind of our ongoing partnerships with Pennsylvania government, companies, uh, non-governmental organizations of various kinds, and other educational institutions such as the University of Pittsburgh right across the, the Gulf from here. Some of the opportunities that uh, I'm interested in, we're interested in, and I hope that you would be interested in. Uh, we're going to have the uh, 2015 meeting of the Intelligent Transportation uh, Sim Society, thank you, uh, here in Pittsburgh next year. It's an opportunity for us to kind of raise our visibility in the community uh, and make some connections. Uh, Sean is leading the effort to bring in a Carnegie Mellon University Mobility Analytics Center. You can ask him about it uh, later on. Uh, basically, it's getting data feeds from lots of places around the area and having the data available to try and make the system behave more effectively. Um, Stan is leading the effort to try and uh, do a connected vehicle pilot here in the city uh, so that we can actually Think about having vehicles talk to each other, vehicles talk to infrastructure, uh, pedestrians talk to vehicles. Heck, I almost got hit walking in this morning while somebody came, did a left turn right in front of me as I was walking across the street. It'd be nice to have a warning for the person. Um, connected and automated vehicle technology and policy. I remember when we had the first automated ve vehicle in the basement of Porter Hall 25 years ago or so that would go off into Shenley Park and go around the pathways. Well, the technology's evolved since there. It's now starting to get out on the roadways, and there are lots of issues associated with making that technology reliable and what sort of policy changes need to be done to, uh, for things like driver's licensing and the like. So that's an area that we'd really like to, uh, to work on over the next t years or so. Pittsburgh package technology deployments. We've had a lot of success in doing deployments of technology around Pennsylvania. We've got ideas for doing some more, and I think it's an it's a area in which the city government, the county government are newly receptive to introducing new technology. So it's, an, again, another an opportunity. Um, alternative fuels research and deployment. Uh, I have a project going on right now funded by the Fuel Freedom Foundation, which is trying to look at natural gas as a fuel 
we had our advisory committee meeting early on. There are a number of other activities around campus on alternative fuels, and they're somewhat disconnected. Traffic 21 is an opportunity to try and get some synergies going in the alternative fuels world. Um, cooperative work with Metro 21. There's Traffic 21. Uh, if you haven't heard yet, there's also coming along a Metro 21. Uh, we'll be working in partnership with the Metro 21 to try and change the course of how urban areas evolve and perform. Um, next March, we're planning a national uh, uh, safety research workshop on campus. Uh, that'll be bringing in people from around the country. Uh, and again, an opportunity to showcase some of our activities. And then uh, I think there are opportunities coming along for center and network funding, uh, largely from the federal government, uh, but also from uh, places like foundations that we can try and think about putting pro proposals together for. So lots of opportunities out there. And uh, Stan asked me to mention the ones that are right now. <laughs> so I, I put a slide together for that. Um, there's a request for proposals out for the University Transportation Center for funding uh, in the future, uh, and people can respond to that. Uh, there's an RFP for Metro 21 that just came out, and I think a number of the uh, proposals that come in for that will have transportation as a component. It's one of those system of systems in the metropolitan area. And there's an RFP for Pennsylvania Infrastructure Technology Alliance out, PETA. Uh, which is run through ISIS. And the nice thing about these is they can, they can all be matching for each other. And so you can kind of put together a package from a set of them. And so all of you should be thinking about, gee, what are, what are my great ideas that I, I could put forward to respond to these sorts of opportunities? Rick Stafford, um, I, uh, I'll, I'll give you a quick pitch for Metro 21. Uh, I haven't gotten the RFP. I'm uh, directing that initiative now and hoping that uh, we generate a lot of interest. Uh, uh, re uh, responses are due October 31st, so you have plenty of time. And as Chris already said, the Metro 21 initiative is uh, uh, a pretty broadly uh, encompassing uh, idea and it includes transportation. So uh, uh, you're do you want to say a little bit about how much you, you can ask for in your request? <laughs> Up to 75000 And, and we, we're expecting to fund somewhere around 10 to 12 proposals. Not all will be at $75,000. So. <laughs> so, the average will be lower than 75000 Any questions on Metro 21 while well, Rick has the floor? What are some of the major themes that you're looking to include in the Metro 21 uh, program? Yeah. Well, we're being very broad. Uh, the the idea is that um, and, and rather than themes, I'll give you some examples. The the main idea is that we want to uh, identify things in the home metro, meaning Pittsburgh. So. Uh, areas that would have uh, a lot of interest, for example, would be 911, 311, 211 analytics, um, predictive analytics on the, is that me? Yeah. Um, We're just trying to make sure we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. that's all. Yeah. You can use the mic. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry, I should have used the mic. You are using it. I am using it. <laughs> Uh, also, we're, uh, uh, another example would be the, the whole water source system. It's very, it's, it's a big issue right now in uh, this metro uh, uh, 
uh, a, uh, a lot of interest by the Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority in a series of projects, which I'll be including in my briefing. Um, so I don't want to take too much time, uh, but uh, if, you, if you haven't gotten the RFP, let me know, just our staff, uh, and I'll send it personally. It should have gone out to everybody in the university. And there are three briefings scheduled. If you can't make any of them, send me an email and I'll answer in more detail. But, but the major idea here is that we want to focus on the home turf. Very similar to Traffic 21, so we can build our credibility uh, as we reach to national issues. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, I want to take a minute to introduce myself. I'm Farnam Jahanian. I'm the new vice president. I'll talk loud. Don't worry about it. Um, I'm the new vice president for research on campus. This is my third week on the job, so happy to be here. Um, as, as some of you know, uh, I've been on the faculty at the University of Michigan for 20 years, but I last four years I headed the Computer and Science and Information Directorate uh, at the National Science Foundation. That was my immediate uh, position before coming to Carnegie Mellon. Of course, had an opportunity to work with uh, uh, your president, Dr. Suresh, for a couple of years. We all were laughing at, at NSF. Uh, so uh, instead of giving you a long introduction to my background and so on, let me give a strong endorsement to a couple of uh, programs that were mentioned. Of course, Traffic 21 and also Metro 21. My perspective coming particularly from National Science Foundation is that this melding of cyber and the physical world is truly transformative. Access to sensors, access to various kinds of technologies that are being deployed not only in our environment but in our cars in various kinds of uh, physical systems that we deal with. All the way from transportation systems to smart grids of course, uh, smart cities and so on. And, and not only the role of technology is, and I'm preaching to the choir prior, prior, uh, when I mention this, not only it's transformative in terms of collection of data, analysis of data, and, and reacting to that, but also the belief is that uh, ability to manage this data and integrate and fuse disparate sources of data is going to be critical to making the, the infrastructure much more intelligent. Of course, there's a lot of research done on this campus related to this. But what's unique abilities of this campus are not only a strong engineering uh, program across the board, but also strong computer science. And it uh, dovetails nicely with policy issues, strong policy program. But let's not forget also we have some of the world-renowned data mining and machine learning experts on this campus. So there are core competencies all around from the project that you mentioned, of course, activities of Raj Rajkumar, whom I've known for 20 some years, uh, uh, to, to the various activities in civil engineering and, and, and other parts of campus. Uh, the final comment that I want to make is that if you look at the Cyber Physical Systems Program at the National Science Foundation, which was launched about five years ago and so on, it's the kind of program that shows that you need to bring interdisciplinary research teams to bear to address some of these societal challenges that we have. And I know, if I'm not mistaken, I think CPS program actually funds some of the Traffic 21 activities on campus. I know Raj has a program in this. But my expectation is that not only from the Department of Transportation, NSF, and DARPA, we should expect that these kind of fundings about bringing intelligence to our physical infrastructure is going to grow over time. And that's the kind of thing that it is uh, extremely critical to sort of the uh, 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 to many of the national priorities that we have to address. Since Norman is here, I should tell you that while we're talking about all the issues having to do intelligent infrastructure, let's not forget collection of this data, analyzing this data, and so on. There are serious privacy issues. There are serious cybersecurity issues. And again, this campus has significant core competencies related to the issues of cybersecurity and privacy. Again, cuts across the board. I wanted to just give you my strong endorsement of these set of activities, and hopefully I'll have an opportunity to uh, uh, contribute to it and also interact with, with you folks. By the way, yes, I do have OSB, uh, the Office of Compliance, Office of Technology Transfer, uh, Government Relations, all of that is under my office as well. And, and 
more to come. Thank you. Okay, I was not expected, expecting to be uh, put on the spot here. Uh, so I'm, oh, I'm Norman Sede, Professor of Computer Science, and I'm here uh, for a couple of different reasons. In part, I've been uh, doing data mining work uh, in the context of a project called LifeFoods, where we've been mining social media data. And at the same time, as uh, Farnan just pointed out, I'm also uh, working quite a bit in security and privacy. It creates some interesting conflicts that I've got to deal with uh, internally, and that's obviously what uh, makes research and being here uh, a lot of fun. Thank you. It's not coming on, but I'll just talk about two. Um, I'm Scott Matthews. I was on sabbatical last year, so a lot of you, when Traffic 21 was meeting, didn't meet me because I wasn't here. Um, I'm in civil and environmental engineering and engineering public policy, and uh, most of my interest data, not necessarily from sensors, but data models to uh, make uh, better policy decisions and better <coughs> uh, decisions for environmental and sustainability issues. Okay. I'll keep it brief so we can move on. Okay. Anybody I missed? Well, that's it for preparation. It's now time for you folks to ask questions or talk about uh, issues. This whole idea of systems of systems and collecting information and sensing information, um, that, can, that can be very um, um, narrow in terms of the, some of the things that Farnham had talked about, which is um, how, not only the privacy issues, but why are we collecting the data? What are we going to accomplish by collecting the data, uh, whether it's from the city planning agency or law enforcement or health organizations, it's about creating quality of life for people. So uh, and as Rick knows from the very beginning, before Metro 21 was uh, formed, it was called City 21. And before that, it was called the Urban Systems Institute. And from the School of Architecture's point of view, we want to make sure the design and placemaking is involved in all of this data gathering and data mining and systems design. Because the reason we're controlling stormwater or we're trying to figure out how much time it takes to come from Cranberry to Pittsburgh, it's all about the people that use these systems and the people who live in the neighborhoods. So we'll continue to be, from the School of Architecture and also from the Heinz College in terms of public policy, we'll be talking about social issues, design issues, and, and, and that's infused here in, in, in Traffic uh, 21. In fact, one of our original grants from Traffic 21 came to the School of Architecture Remaking Cities Institute to deal with wayfinding in Oakland. How can Oakland be a, a, a more friendly place for people who come, visitors, patients, students, whatever it might be. So we looked at digital technology, smart parking, smart transportation, bus rapid transit, but that all intersects <clears throat> with people's lives and what they do in their homes, what they do in their workplaces, what they do in the third places, which is where they hang out and all those things might happen. <clears throat> and I'd sent Farnham this article called The Too Smart City that was published by a woman at the uh, Boston Globe in which people were talking about this whole smart cities thing, whether it's Cisco or IBM or Ericsson, they're all in this space collecting data. And, and she points out the security issues, the privacy issues collecting data. And the other thing is how do you measure people's feelings about a place. Why do they feel better in this neighborhood than that neighborhood? Is it about public safety? Is it about the scale of things? Is it about the public amenities? And so uh, you could just, if you want to read the article, just uh, Google too, the, the Too Smart City, and you can see people who are kind of nervous about the systems of systems way of, of, of looking at city life. So that's my sermon for today. <laughs> <clears throat> Other comments, questions? Yeah, yeah. Um, I just wanted to mention that there's um, you know, two opportunities coming up. One that Chris mentioned with the Mobility Analytics um, Center, uh, where we're trying to take a lot of multimodal, multi jurisdictional sources of transportation data and combine those together for analytics. Um, 
but also in the whole area of dedicated short-range communications, vehicles, um, vehicles talking to vehicles, vehicles talking to the infrastructure, to pedestrians, as Chris mentioned. Um, we do have a lot of this infrastructure coming into Pittsburgh, and we're looking for um, you know, faculty that are interested in doing research on top of it. So this could be research on vehicles, research on pedestrians, research on transit, any way that you can utilize this short-range communication network. Um, USDOT has a lot of interest in that and will be applying for upcoming grants that we expect should be pretty significant using Pittsburgh as a test bed. So if you have any interest in, in those two areas, please, uh, please see us. And again, uh, any, um, a lot of USDOT interest on the security and privacy side. So uh, please see us on the privacy security side. If you have any research interest there, we see a lot of, a lot of funding availability out there. Mobility Analytics uh, Data Analytics Center. Uh, so the basic idea, like Chris mentioned, is really about gathering as many data as possible from different entities, including public agencies, private firms, uh, local firms, local city, and from individual travelers. From We are basically getting the data from different entities. The primary reason to do this is not only we wanted to provide the information back to the travelers, to the trucking firms, for example, for truck delivery, routing, scheduling. So the primary reason is actually to you make the best use of all these data integratively to provide the better decision making for public agencies. Uh, for example, if um, DOT uh, or the city wants to close the road, there's no mechanism at this time to understand what's the general you know, traffic impact of that road closure. If the, when the Pittsburgh Bridge closed, tunnel is closed for 10 days, what's the socioeconomic impact? What's the traffic impact? So we can use some sort of, some sort of data from parking system, from transit system, from railway system, uh, integrate, look at the data integratively, build a some sort of sophisticated um, travel behavior model to understand how will people make choices based on those road closure, based on those what-if scenarios, so that we can provide the better decision making for, uh, for public agencies. So that's one thing. Um, and then part of the uh, MAC uh, development is, is now we are building a, some sort of uh, information system, um, it's, which is in the region of Power 32, which is uh, the 32 region across the four states uh, centered around the Pittsburgh, Allegheny County um, so part of that effort is really taking the Mac as some sort of data engine as a core and then build a web application to provide the information from different sources, like I mentioned, from parking, from transit, from roadway, from incidents, from police department, from a DOT, get all these data integratively and provide the information back to travelers. So the travelers, I really mean not only the travelers like us, like individual travelers, we need to go to Morgantown, what the travel time look like, what's the accident, whether there's any incidents, things like that, but also provided to the truck drivers. Remember that the, the Power 32, this 32 county, a county is actually the main corridor, uh, the, the highway corridor for the whole nation. A lot of truck drivers going through, through this region to transport the goods around the continent. So um, we wanted to provide a very strong analysis uh, information system to back to those truck drivers so that uh, facilitate their decision makings on which route to take, what time of day they were going to use uh, to, to use all the highways. Um, so that's, um, uh, that's part of the, uh, the efforts we are currently working on. Um, if you uh, really welcome any of, a lot of you to give us a lot of inputs and in case that you know some of the data sources in, around the city, around the county, that could be useful to really do a lot of decision making. Uh, that uh, really welcome any comments. Um, if you have any other suggestions or you'll be interested to work 
um, uh, you know, with us. So also let me know. I would be very interested to discuss more details offline with you. Two things that would be really interesting is uh, it seems like many of the opportunities that are available to us require cross collab collaboration across the colleges. Um, and I don't know most of the people in this room. And I don't know how many people in this room know each other. It, um, I'm not looking to create another repository that nobody uses, but just to be really targeting opportunities like the Metro 21, which did ask for cross college collaboration, the CPS call, which definitely looking for cross college, cross discipline collaboration, whether we could identify a, a way to just very easily communicate the things that we're interested in to form those collaborations for people who don't know each other, because there's a lot of duplicated effort on campus. Um, and then the second thing I wanted to mention is that there's a really active organization, organization in Pittsburgh called, the, called Code for Pittsburgh. It's called, part of Code for America, and they're looking at a lot of the same problems, and they're people that are just doing it for free because they love to code, um, and they want to do it to help Pittsburgh. The, uh, Pittsburgh, the city of Pittsburgh hired a data scientist recently, just like a, about a year ago, um, and she's wonderful to work with, Laura. Yeah, Mike Sell, yeah. Chris, I might have picked up on that. Um, one of the, the whole idea of Traffic 21 and Metro 21 And uh, in fact, um, I just negotiated a literal memo of understanding with the city. Deborah Lamb, who is Laura's boss, uh, is our point person. And we, we meet and stay as part of these meetings regularly with Deborah on what the city sees and trying to link faculty, you know, back and forth. And, and um, so consider these opportunities. If you have an idea, you know, that you, you want a community partner for, uh, that's what we're really trying to make happen here. Mm -hmm. Because we further development by actually deploying it, right? And you need those partnerships. So please, you may have an idea, but not a community partner in mind. We'll help you find that community partner. Um, and that's a big part of what these initiatives are. Technology Center, Engineering and Computer Science, Heinz College, and School of Architecture and School of Design all working on this project together. Every time you knock on somebody's door, they open it up and drag you in. So we're doing a street lighting study for the city, converting metal halide and sodium um, fixtures to LED. You might have seen it in the business districts. Well, our partner there was the School of Drama. Why would the School of Drama? Because some of the best lighting experts in the world are in the School of Drama. And now we're working with robotics on a corridor study, Route 51 Sawmill Run. They're doing the Surtrack kind of model for, for traffic timing real time. And we're doing the kind of urban design, stormwater management stuff. And we're going to bring in CIT, people like Gene Van Briesen or David Zombach, people like that would come forward with their expertise. So I think the idea of having some kind of clearinghouse or meet and greet so people can find, you know, their partners because the best projects are the ones that are multidisciplinary. There's no question about it. <clears throat> well, one, one step along that way is we're going to try and uh, revive the website for Traffic 21 and kind of list faculty and interests of faculty. I'm hoping that everybody in the room will be content with being on that list and being affiliated with the traffic point. studies are being done where data is being collected as an opportunity to help you with those data analysis and those students and other projects. Okay. Other 
comments? One of the ideas behind Metro 21 is we, we're just getting started, okay, um, but is to uh, have some kind of sharing sessions. I hadn't really thought of the building the database, if you will, uh, but um, hopefully we'll, we'll get to something like that um, because, again, Metro 21 is not, the intention isn't to be an institute, but to bring the institutes and centers together uh, in the talents of faculty. So. Um, that, uh, hopefully that'll be coming down the horizon somewhere. Dan? Uh, bring up one other uh, opportunity kind of from the business side and the folks from, from the business school is that if there's, there's a lot of interest in performance metrics uh, from USDOT and state DOTs coming all the way down to the metropolitan planning organization. So there's a lot of interest out there in, in research on performance metrics. So. Um, that may be an area of interest as well. And then also just the, like in traveler information, which is typically the domain of state departments of transportation, a lot of that is shifting to the private sector. And so there's a lot of questions out there within USDOT and the state DOTs of, you know, where do you delineate the roles of the private sector with communicating traveler information and the public sector? So those are those are some of the uh, interest areas kind of maybe from the business side as well. Okay. Well, Art, thanks for coming. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I think I'll close at that point. And um, uh, just to tell you that Traffic 21 Institute is now open. You know, we're up and running. Uh, Stan is probably the best person for, to hit with questions or requests or whatever. And I hope you all are kind of thinking about the opportunities that exist out there in the transportation and metropolitan areas. Okay, there's more food too, so grab some. <laughs>